Today we're going to visit with Wildlife Division Chief Casey Anderson and give a 2022 Deer Lottery Preview. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Welcome to the program, Casey. Casey, how many deer licenses are available this year compared to last year? So this year we gave out 64,200, which is a reduction of about 8,000 licenses for the regular deer gun season. Why the decrease? Yeah, and so a lot of that was due to EHD outbreak that we had that really affected the Missouri River corridor and then south and west of there. We had a few other areas that popped up, but um, you know, looking at some of the things that we look at to determine licenses, um, it was apparent that we needed to back down on a lot of those licenses. Casey, how do you and your big game crew, how do you guys come up with the license numbers? Yeah, so there's a myriad of things that they look at, whether it's just information coming in from hunters, information coming in from landowners, um, depredation reports, you know, as we go through the winter. And then we do our aerial surveys if we have enough snow to get that done. Um, and we did get a good portion of the state done, but um, that was mostly the east side, a little bit on the northeast side of the Missouri River. Um, but in those areas where we got hit with EHD the hardest, uh, the snowpack wasn't good enough to get a, get a good survey. And then um, also our guys that are out there running around doing their work duties and what they're seeing out on the landscape as well. We use the hunter harvest surveys um, coming back from last fall to see how successful hunters were on the landscape. So all these play a key role in coming up with these numbers? Yep. Casey, our deer population is managed by units. Explain that. Yeah, so we have 38 units across the state um, and they're kind of split by habitat types and, you know, in some cases broken down to help spread hunters out. And the units that we had, the biggest decreases from EHD, uh, 3C and 3B3 right here, north and south of Bismarck along the Missouri River. You know, as for example, in 3C, we gave out zero whitetail deer licenses this year. And we even reduced the any antlerless and any antlered licenses um, just to try to help make up for that EHD loss that happened. Okay, just to rebuild the population. Yep. Uh, let's talk population. Let's talk other than the EHD units. How is how are the whitetail populations around the rest of the state? So outside the EHD units, um, were really the areas we got to fly uh, because we had good snow cover. But those populations seem to be stable. Um, we had a few units that increased a little and then a few units that decreased a little, but uh, overall um, fairly stable as far as the whitetail populations go in those other areas. Okay, let's move on to mule deer populations. Yeah, our mule deer population, uh, the, they just got done flying a couple weeks ago and uh, they look surprisingly well. Um, our big game biologists had some concern coming out of this drought, um, what kind of fawn recruitment there might be after winter, but you know the winter wasn't nearly as severe out west until these last couple blizzards, snow events that we had, and so really those deer fared through the majority of the winter pretty well, and, they, and in most cases our mule deer population was stable to increasing. Okay, this is the first year in a number of years where we actually went down in deer uh, rifle licenses. Yeah, so we'd kind of been on an upward trajectory ever since, what, 2012? Um, after those three big bad blizzard winters in a row that we had in 9, 10, 11. And so, yeah, you know, we had slowly been creeping back up, um, but with the EHD outbreak and EHD hitting, especially the area that had never seen EHD before, um, it, it knocked the whitetail population down. Okay, uh, are there strategies people can do when applying for a deer license? Yeah, so it's gonna be a little hard this year because you know there'll be some statistics about how easy it was or not to get drawn in a certain unit last year. But with 8,000 licenses being reduced, people are gonna wanna pay attention to the, the allocations in those units and, and maybe look at you know, how many people in the past applied in those units because with the reduction in tags, it's obviously not gonna get easier in certain units to get drawn. And so they'll really wanna pay attention to that. 
Okay, let's talk chronic waste and disease. Any changes in the CWD regulations? So for CWD, the you know we had three new units that got added um, where we found new positives, essentially 3D1, 3E2, and 3C. Um, and so there'll be any of our units that have CWD or, or are fairly close to a CWD have some restrictions, whether that be uh, transportation restrictions on, on animal parts from those deer or uh, baiting restrictions. And so folks are going to want to definitely check those out before they apply. Um, and when they apply for a unit that has a CWD restriction, uh, there should be a message that kind of pops up alerting folks to that. So if they want to dig into it farther and decide if they want to apply for that unit, they can. Okay. Uh, when is the deadline? So the deadline is June 8th this year. And so uh, it's coming up on us pretty fast, but uh, they, hopefully they get in and apply. A lot of great information, Casey. Thank you.